we're turning the corner in the biggest boat restoration project of our lives. And now that we're in our new location, things are going to get interesting because we're going to take advantage of these amazing professionals we found to right some big wrongs on our boat. This is Luke. Tell you what. And I'm Lori. Nothing's easy these days. And we're setting up shop and diving right into some huge decisions for the future of our steel sailboat. So don't get comfortable, because we're about to cut things up. And if you like a redemption story, subscribe to our channel, like this video, and ring that bell. It's a totally free way to keep the journey alive. Yep. It's rain every single time we get here. Sometime in the afternoon, it starts to rain and it's been ruining our plans. So we really need to get a boat shed as soon as possible. We pulled the boat out of the sand blaster and because we ended up taking so long to figure out a place to go, she ended up really dirty. So we're gonna have to wash her down and rain is not enough. And then we're gonna have to build her a shed. But for now, we're getting her into place right now. They're actually clearing out this section for her to back up and straighten up. She's, she's kind of in the middle of nowhere all. This is Plinio. He's the owner of this enormous shipyard and he's always around taking care of things. Today he's helping us get our boat into place and set up shop. And you can be sure that wherever he is, his little friend Mel is right behind. Look at this. Do you understand this at all? I don't. It was raining five seconds ago, but I'll take it. When we started moving the boat, Thankfully we're doing it and, and they were standing right next to this particular wheel because as the, mo st the boat started moving back, the wheel started to come off and we realized that during all this move and this mess, someone didn't put the pin back on. And now we're gonna get the crane, <laughs> we're gonna get the crane to support it so we can fix this and then actually get the boat back. But thank God somebody was there to see it. The man behind all these fun toys is crane operator Anderson. He's Plinio's son and also owner of Diaz Transportes. And he's been helping us move in, find workers, and get the right tools we need to work on our boat.
roaming around right now and doing some trash picking. <laughs> See if there's anything good here. And there's this ladder here that we can use at the back of the boat. Um, it's like halfway up, so we're thinking about getting uh, like another part and like creating another part. So there's a lot of wood around here, so I think that's totally possible. Is. It's not a ladder, it's a staircase. Um, it's actually a lot taller than I thought, or the boat's a lot shorter than I thought, because I think we only need um, either two big steps or three small ones to make it into the boat. And we're there, and, and then we could put like a little like handrail here, and it'll make it so much easier getting in and out, especially if we're gonna um, climb up and climb down with stuff in our hands. It's a super pain. We did that in Rio the entire time. We felt like we are gonna die. Because actually the, the cradle was even taller there. So. Awesome, super happy. This is, this is working out really well and we're really glad we moved to this location. Um, can't say enough. Really, really happy. Things are looking up. Now that we are here, there's a few things that we wanted to get done with the hull and the exterior prior to us getting the interior. Uh, no matter how much we want to get in there, there's a few things that really need to be addressed first. And if you've been making comments about our welds, we completely agree. Um, it's something that we suffered with since our previous location in Rio. Not much to talk about it. Let's just fix it and get it over with. So these welds were emphasized more, even more after the sandblasting. Um, it revealed that they are porous and some issues, they have some issues. Um, also, they're very textured. So this means that rust can form within these cracks, we're gonna have to sand them down. So we're gonna actually go in, sand all these down, get a welder out here to fix any kind of issues that might happen. We're gonna use that liquid in order to test if there's any kinds of leaks. And then we're going to finish finally with this hull in the best condition that we could possibly leave it prior to um, doing all of the, the coating. but now the motorcycle doesn't start. Okay, we're here. We have our welder. Um, he's actually uh, well recommended so let's see how the results are he comes from this company over here he works at this they're working on a humongous ferry um, repairing it so we're grabbing him on the weekend
So it's just non-stop rain here, not really helping us out that much, as you can see. Not looking great. So remember how you saw massive amounts of, of epoxy ferrin compound coming off the boat? Well, this is why. We had huge welds, huge welds. Again, we're not going to go into the quality of them. We're just going to say they were done, they were big, they were ridiculous, and now we're taking them off. So now this is gonna eliminate the problem that we had where we were forced to put tons of compound on the boat just to hide uh, the welds. So this is gonna reduce many problems. One being how much fairing compound we need to use. Two being the boat being much more attractive now um, without these like hunk and ugly welds on them. And three, we are going back over them so they're going to be even more secure um, so we have a really very good welded and he is going over all the wells to double check are they porous are there any holes are they co okay and we're sealing them up and making sure that they are safe and good and beautiful this time around it down he's seeing that there's a lot of pores inside of it there's a lot of like what uh, empty spaces so we're definitely going to continue sanding and he's gonna weld any parts that look like um, compromised in any way and the second we get this done we're, we're gonna pass over a primer to make sure that, that uh, we don't have any more issues having difficulties being able to seal them off and we became very paranoid about rust. So as you can see, they weren't built correctly. As you can see on the inside, they are hollow. And if we had installed them properly and we had done them correctly, we probably wouldn't have taken them off. But because of this issue on the bottom of the boat, we just couldn't figure out where all the holes were. The proper installation to this should have been when they were on the ground, 
they were sealed off properly. The pipe was put in. It didn't happen that way. So we're gonna change them. <laughs> and maybe you could let us know what designs that you would like, because we have a really good one in mind. Less blocky, less utilitarian, and a little more commercial, but not like a traditional one where just we have the pipes going on. But what do you think we should do now that we have the Davids off?